sacred musicians spend countless hours seeking music that is suitable for the corresponding lectionary year, miscellaneous religious themes, or for special events. The advent of online worship planning resources has allowed church musicians to have far greater access to more titles than in years past. However, there are still significant issues that make the current marketplace challenging for publishers and purchasers of sacred music alike. Some of the primary issues with the current online systems for digital publishing are the following. Lack of digital copies of scores for preview and purchase. Lack of recordings for sampling. Unlisted scriptural references. And limited access to more diverse or less traditional music for worship. To solve these issues, I would suggest the formation of an ecumenical worship leader team that would aggregate the online publisher's scores and make a globally sourced network to ensure that every musical selection has suitable score previews, scriptural references, recordings, and digital copies. We could likewise ensure the inclusion of underrepresented groups in worship resources. Improvement in these areas would not only make publishing more profitable for publishing companies, but would also facilitate the process of worship planning for sacred musicians, as well as encourage a more inclusive ministerial culture that could ultimately defy denominational boundaries. Professor Wayne Wold is a semi-retired professor of music, church musician, performer, and widely published composer of sacred music. He began teaching at Hood College in 1990 and is a lifelong church musician. He coordinates the Church Music Institute through Shenandoah Conservatory, which is an annual certification process at the graduate and undergraduate levels. He currently serves as the regional counselor for the Mid-Atlantic region of the American Guild of Organists. In an attempt to learn more about what it takes to get a sacred music composition published, I asked Professor Wold about his early experiences. Uh, when I was at my undergrad, I did take composition for a couple semesters just to kind of start on the process. Um, especially did more when I was in um, getting my master's degree at Wittenberg University in Ohio. Um, my composition teacher there was Donald Osaro, who was a widely known composer, especially of church music at that time. And that's when I sort of got the itch that I would love to get something published because I had such admiration and awe for people who had a, uh, a piece of theirs published. And uh, sent in uh, probably a few dozen things um, before I finally got something accepted, which is normal um, for, for everybody um, to do that. Um, you have to you have to understand rejection and then later on in life you're grateful that those things didn't get published perhaps unless you can revise them later which is some of the things I did actually during during the quarantine to do that but you know you send things off it used to be you know a nice big envelope handwritten perhaps um, now we just use a, a click and email our submissions in um, we have to get used to two things number one we have to get used to rejection as I mentioned um, and many times that can be a good thing um, because if a publisher committee, for example, doesn't find it um, sellable, doesn't mean it doesn't have some value, it just means it doesn't fit their needs. So maybe it's a chance to rework it or find a different publisher. So you get used to um, um, rejection. You also have to get used to being very patient um, because sometimes it can take uh, 9, 12 months or even longer sometimes for a publisher to decide if they're going to uh, publish this work or not. So perseverance, patience, um, all those things are very very important for people who are who are composing, um, especially in the church music field, and are hoping to get things published. Professor Wold's insight demonstrates great wisdom and many years of experience. His advice is wonderful for young and seasoned musicians alike, but to me, also further illustrates the need for improvements to our current publishing system. In particular, he mentions that rejection and long wait times for submission are common and should be expected. He elaborates and says that a publisher might find your work strong, but not sellable. With a proposed aggregate online database for sacred music compositions, there would be no need to wait for approval, and a customer satisfaction rating of products could help the best compositions reach a wider audience. I don't personally believe that individual publishing companies should maintain a monopoly on what gets published, and am hopeful that some of the solutions I'm offering might remedy the status quo. In his article, Mining a Legacy, Nicholas Danks explains that publishers are constrained by an oversaturated market, which causes them to limit their catalogs accordingly. 
In the article, Sacred Music Publication in the Second Half of the 20th Century, Tim Sharp, Executive Director of the American Choral Directors Association, maintains that another issue with a successful publication is categorization. Namely, they can be very difficult to classify a work by genre, period, or a number of other variables. Luckily, there are already individuals who are identifying these issues and creating successful processes for improving them. Anna Dubjakovic provides a great resource for educating publishers on building websites to host digital sheet music. Her publication, Navigating Digital Sheet Music on the Web, Challenges and Opportunities, provides insider detail on host sites through the lens of a university-level librarian. These improvements could virtually eliminate the issues of market saturation and categorization. On an even more technical level, authors Frank Kirk, David Dom, Christian Fremery, Minard Muller, and Michael Clausen provide an in-depth system for managing digitized music collections in detail. Their conference paper, A Framework for Managing Multimodal Digitized Music Collections, is an extensive treatise on the front and back end engineering required to make such a platform feasible. In the article, Music Platforms and the Optimization of Culture, Jeremy Morris, Assistant Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, observes publishing activities in detail. And in his research, he highlights the importance of constant improvement in the realms of technological innovation, marketing, and acumen in all things business on the part of the publisher. If we are to ensure the success of both publishers and composers alike, it is incumbent that our system supports both ends. In conclusion, this proposed system, specifically the formation of an international body of ecumenical worship leaders charged with aggregating copywritten scores and open source materials in a unified and well-executed website, already has the most important pieces in place. It is now the time and the responsibility of those invested to act.